Results should always be under construction. Never, ever, ever be satisfied with the way things are. You want to keep them moving. Where are we here? We are on page 16. Thank you. Now, are you ready? Are you really ready? Yes. Most people are extras in their own movie. Isn't that right, Nina? That is 100% accurate. That is 100% accurate. Most people are extras in their own movie. They're looking at someone else and they're thinking, they're so good. If only I. And they're making somebody else the star. And they're putting themselves down. They don't think they can do it. What we want to be is the star of our own movie. And I'm not talking about going on an ego trip. You have to have a strong ego if you're really going to win. But you don't want to have an ego problem. There's a difference. Now, how do you become the star of your own movie? You decide what you want. You become the director, okay? See, when you're the star, when somebody else is the star, you're not the director. Somebody else is directing your movie. You gotta direct your own movie. What do you really want? Now, I gotta say, like, I've been working with this stuff for a long time. That is not an easy thing to figure out because we have not been encouraged to do that since childhood. If we were, then it would have been a piece of cake. You could knock it off pretty easy. But what do you really want? Can you describe, in a few words as possible, exactly what you want? Now, to do this, you begin by writing, I'm so happy and grateful, now that. It's always present tense. I'll tell you how accurate you want to make it. Phil phoned me. What, two weeks ago? Maybe a week ago, I don't know, it wasn't that long ago. And he told me he was going after another Oscar. And I said, and he had sent me a picture of himself holding the Oscar with a note. And I said, Phil, tell you what to do. Get somebody to take a photograph of yourself with the Oscar in one hand, and then get a photograph of yourself with the Oscar in the other hand, and then go to get somebody in Photoshop and all of a sudden you get an Oscar in both hands. You take the arm off one picture and put it on the other picture. So he has a picture that he sent me of himself holding the two Oscars. I said, if you keep looking at that, carry that around and look at it. I said, and you let that sink right into your subconscious mind. And you can do this through imaging too. I said, when that is impressed upon your subconscious mind, that image must move into form. Not maybe, not sometimes, it must. That's an absolute law. The subjective or the subconscious mind is totally deductive. In other words, it has no originating capacity. It cannot change anything. Whatever you put in, that's exactly what starts to move into form. It's like the earth. I love the way Earl Nightingale put it on the strangest secret recording. He said, you can plant nightshade, a deadly poison, and not a sixteenth of an inch away, you can plant corn, a sweet food. He said, one will come up with just as great an abundance as the other. Now, we'll show you that later on in a in a slide here that we've got, you could have, um, you could have, Earth is energy. It's energy. And it's not all the same. It's on different frequencies. You could take out a shovel full of Earth out of the Earth, out of the ground, and it could be all kinds of different frequencies. In other words, you can have a, a seed for corn planted in the Earth and jammed right up against the seed for corn is an energy that is not in harmony with the seed corn. But it may be in harmony with a carrot seed. And the carrot seed could be way over here. That earth would move right across and resonate with the carrot seed. Now you wouldn't see this happening, but that's what actually happens. You see, the earth is like the air. 
all kinds of different frequencies. And the only thing you can attract is the things that are in harmonious vibration with you. Well, that's the only thing the seed can attract is what's in harmony with it. So you got to decide what you want. You got to put it in detail. Okay. Now this is the goal is the most important thing in the world. Phil Goldfein in the last 20 years is without question one of the best that I've ever seen at doing this. Sandy is every bit as good as Phil. She just is going after different things. But they will take direction and they'll just exact. And they don't question it. They've got enough understanding to know that whenever idea you're emotionally involved in, that'll move into form. Okay? Now, I've watched the two of them just perform what many people would look at as magic because they follow direction. I learned to do this, oh, when I was 26, actually, the man that gave me this book, he said, if you'll do exactly what I tell you until you find out I'm lying or I don't know what I'm talking about. So that's the directive I give to people. Now, I don't coach many people one-on-one. -on -one. I don't have time for it, so I don't do it. Um, but when I do, if they don't do exactly what I tell them, they're fired. I quit working with them. And that's not an arrogant attitude. I think that's wise. Because what's the point in me spending time with somebody that isn't going to do what I suggest? I'm wasting my time and theirs. Now, time is very valuable. We all get the same amount, so it's what we do with it that makes the difference. If Phil and Sandy do exactly what I tell them, Sandy will put up a little bit more of a fight. Phil doesn't put up any fight at all. He just, you know, and, uh, you know, she writes the checks, so I take a little bit of crap from her, but not much. Uh, but all kidding aside, she is very good at taking direction and then acting on it. Now, they both have enough understanding today to know that what I'm saying really makes sense. When I told Phil, get that picture, within 10 minutes, I had a picture back and, uh, of him holding the two. In fact, I used it in a seminar. I'll pull it out later on. I'll maybe show it to you tomorrow when I'm introducing him. Now, it's a crappy picture because he took it probably with a phone and he sent it to me on my phone. I took it off my phone and made a slide out of it. So it's not greatest quality, but it gets the idea. Okay. So you want to get your goal and get it right down right. Now, we mentioned before that you have the ability to create your own economy. There's just absolutely no question about it. Uh, there's, um, it doesn't matter what's going on outside, it's what's going on inside. You see, here's the point. We're not talking about a government. We're not talking about government individuals. We're not talking about um, Caesar's force. We're talking about a universal law. And these are not man-made laws, so they're not going to be changed by man. This is very important we get that straight. The laws are not man-made, so they're not going to be changed by man. There is an absolute law that energy will always move into form. It moves into form, through form, and back into form. That is a law. That's a perpetual transportation of energy. It's one of the first laws of the universe. There's only half a dozen laws and everything else is, like we talk about attraction as being a law, it's a secondary law, it's not a primary law at all. Primary law is vibration. And of course, the only thing you can attract are the things that you're in harmonious vibration with. So whatever frequency you're operating on, that's what's gonna dictate what you're going to attract. Well, you can create your own economy. Now let's say economy is, um, is not necessarily uh, dollars and cents. We'll take economy as um, uh, our, our lifestyle. It's just, we'll use economy as a, as a word for our lifestyle, how we want to live. We can create the lifestyle we want. I, um, I feel like I'm blessed. I, I mentioned that before. I live like a charmed life. I live such a phenomenal life. I, I really do. Um, I don't know anybody that lives better than me. I just love the way I live. And, but I've created it. I live the way I like. I was sitting in, I've got a studio that's 50 feet from my house and the earth is heated, so I don't care if it snows, it melts as it hits. And um, I can go to my studio. And the studio is a, uh, it's a, what you call a floating cell. So they built the studio and then they built 
the building inside the building, and the inside doesn't touch the outside, so it's soundproof. It's absolutely incredible. And I've got cameras come out of the ceiling. I've got, I can shoot four cameras simultaneously, and I can broadcast anywhere in the world from my backyard, literally. There was a couple of guys in from a television station one time. I said, it's sort of like a television. No, no, Bob, it is a television station. So here I've got my own television station. I can broadcast all over the world from my backyard. I can do what I want. And Scott, I'm going to get Scott up here and, and tell you how he got here. He's a young guy from Manchester in England. He, he is, the kid's a genius. He can, with his phone back there, he can control the cameras in the studio in my backyard. He's got this all set up. It's just like magic the way this thing operates. It's really cool. Well, now, if I can do that, you can do that. See, that was something that I started to understand at one time. Whenever I was reading about anybody, whatever they were saying, if they could do it, then I can do it. We're all the same. The only difference is the frequency that we're operating on. It's not how much money you've got. It's not who you know. It's the frequency you're operating on. You've got to get that straight. Some people say, yeah, but look at all the people you know. It doesn't matter if you know anybody. You don't have to know anybody. It just happens. When you get on the right frequency, you start attracting it. And you cannot stop it coming to you until you change the frequency. It's like turning on a radio station. Whatever's on that frequency is what's going to be broadcast through your radio. Well, whatever's on the frequency you're on is what's going to be broadcast through your life, like the, the actions and the results. It's all an expression of that. It's all about the mind, and it's about your marvelous mind. And we've got to get this straight. Most people do not understand this. I have people say, well, I understand it. Listen, if you really understand it, check your results. That, that'll tell you. By their fruit, you'll know them. It's the best advice Check your results. See, you can know something intellectually but not know it. You can know it intellectually. You stay here and you read this and you'll say, well, you could repeat it. But the results aren't there. Why? You don't get it yet. You've got to get it on a subjective level. It's got to become part of your paradigm. When it's a part of your paradigm, it'll manifest in your physical world. And if it's not part of your paradigm, it's going to just stick in your consciousness. Now, what you've got to realize is that you started out as a little kid prior to school, learning, develop the intellect. You went to school, and it's all about the intellect. That's the whole deal. Develop the intellect. It's not about the intellect. Some real dumb people, intellectually, build big organizations. You can build an organization all over the world and you might not be very bright intellectually. There's people that can neither read nor write, they're functionally illiterate, and yet they build multi-million dollar organizations. How come? That's what's operating in their subjective mind. It's a subjective mind that's manifesting in your life. If you don't like what's in your life, get your ego, get your intellect the hell out of the road. If you don't change your subjective mind, you're not going to change anything. I hope you enjoyed this video. We put a lot of good information up here and it causes everything in your life to get better. If you'd like us to notify you every time we put a new video up, hit subscribe and then turn on notifications. Check out all our videos and we will notify you when we put a new one up.